Hi, and welcome to Try Accept. I'm your host, Sean. I am a machine learning engineer, and today I'm going to show you how to start a basic single page fast API project, which connects to a database. In the follow up episode, I will show you how to structure this project for larger applications so you can better maintain your code and your own projects. I'm using a basic read only application that leverages Postgres for this tutorial. There are two presumptions for this tutorial. You have a good understanding of Python and you have a good understanding of databases, particularly SQL or SQL databases. On our complexity scale, this tutorial has a rating of upper easy, meaning anyone with moderate experience should be able to implement this with ease and beginners should manage just fine. So on screen, you can see the dependencies for this project. If you do not have them installed, please install them now using either pip or conda. So we're going to make our main file main.py and we're going to now do our import statements. So from fast API import fast API. HTTP exception and depends. We're next going to import cores middleware. Following this, we're going to import packages from SQL alchemy, beginning with declarative base. Following this, we're going to import column, double precision, date, and create engine. And actually, because this is uh, longer, I'm actually going to place this above declarative base. And next, we're going to import session maker from sqlalchemy.orm. Moving on to Pydantic, we're going to import the base model. And the final import statement is for UVCorn. Moving on, we're going to establish our connection to the database. We're going to insert the actual connection string into the application itself. And it's worth noting this is not best practice. Instead, you should use a service such as Azure's Key Vault to read in the connection string. As you can see, I have my username and password both set to Postgres. It is running on localhost on port 5432. My database is called tutorials. To actually connect to the database, I need to define the engine. So engine equals create engine and provide the connection string as the argument. So moving on, we're going to make the session. So session local equals session maker. Auto commit is set to false. Auto flush is set to false. And we're going to bind the engine. Next, we're going to make the base. It's a declarative base. And then to finish setting up the database, we're going to say base.metadata.create all, and then we're going to bind the engine. Next, to actually create the application, you simply write app equals fast API. We're going to define our origins. So origins equals all. An origin is the combination of protocol, domain, and port. So allowing all origins means that anything on your local machine can now connect to your application. So next we're going to define our middleware and we're going to use cores middleware, which is used to define an API security. So we're going to write app.add middleware, cores middleware. We're going to assign allow origins to origins and we're going to allow credentials to true and allow methods to all and allow headers to all. All is represented by the asterisk symbol, as you can see. So following this, we're going to define a method to interact with our database. We're going to name this method getDB, and we're going to just say DB equals session local. We're then going to try yield db and finally db close. Okay, so we're going to move on to the database tables. So all my tables have the same structure to them. Each one represents a different stock ticker. So in the next episode, I'll actually show you how to scale that instead of needing to create a new class for each table. So we're going to name the class. So class historical table Google using camel case in this instance, which is considered best practices with Python naming conventions. 
we're going to provide it the base and then we're going to define the table name so underscore underscore table name underscore underscore equals the name of your table in this case it's google historical without the e i'm going to fast forward this bit so it's going to be date open high low close volume dividends and stock splits you will need a primary key and in this case we'll set it to be the date then following this we're going to do the exact same for microsoft and we're just going to change google to msft the name of the microsoft ticker next we're going to make a function to query the database in this case we're going to make the get recent method which will get the most recent record from that table def get recent database and then we're going to provide it the table and then we're going to say most recent record equals db dot query and then table dot order by table dot date dot descending dot first and we're going to then return the most recent record we're going to do the exact same for getting the oldest record so oldest record equals db dot query table dot order by table dot date dot first and then we're going to return the oldest record After this, we're going to create our request body and our response body. So to begin class ticker request base model, and then we're going to make a ticker string and query string. Following this, we're going to make another class. So class ticker request, then we're going to provide it the base model, and then we're going to say ticker string and and close value. So next we're going to define our endpoint. So at app.post, and then we're going to provide the URL. So in this case, it's forward slash ticker forward slash record. This function will be an asynchronous function. So async def, and then we're going to name it get ticker record. The arguments will be ticker request, which will be the class we just defined, ticker request. And of course, using best naming conventions, it'll be ticker underscore request, yet the type will be ticker request, the class, which will be camel case. Okay, next we're just going to define the database. So db equals depends get db. Following this, we're going to define the valid tickers. So we're going to say valid tickers equals the dictionary, Google historical table google so the class comma microsoft so msft historical table microsoft now this approach of defining a bunch of different classes for the tables is not sustainable so once again in next episode i'll show you how to deal with this next we're going to create a list containing the valid queries which will just be recent and oldest So we want to now access attributes of the ticker request class. So we're going to say if ticker request dot ticker not in valid tickers, we're going to raise a HTTP exception. So in this case, we're going to set the status code to be 400. We're going to do the same again for the queries. So we're going to say if ticker request dot query not in valid queries we're going to raise a http exception of status code 400 and finally we're going to do the last bit of logic which is if ticker.query equals recent we're going to use the get recent function so record equals get recent database table
else we're going to use get oldest. We don't need to check the value as we previously checked that it's either recent or oldest. And if we've checked that it is recent and it isn't, therefore the only other option would be oldest. Finally, we're going to actually build the script to run the application. So if name equals main uvcorn dot run app host is 0 0.0.0.0, .0. that is your local host. And we're going to set the port equal to 5,000. Oh, and on a quick note, I accidentally spelled two columns wrong. So instead of column, these are meant to be volume. So if you go to localhost on port 5000 forward slash docs, you can then query the application. Okay, so that's it for today. If you like the channel, please subscribe. If you'd like to see more entertaining videos, please check out if elsewhere we cover more interesting topics. This has been Sean from TriAccept. I'll see you next time.